Where we're in um, uh, Fairfield House, one of the point blocks in Cotton Gardens Estate. This is the floor we live on, which is the ninth floor. Um, this is the fire door from the internal corridor going out to the fire escape. Um, behind us, you can see there are these gaps, uh, slats, <coughs> which are open onto the outside, which I guess aerates um, the, the block. On the left-hand side here, is when you come out, you've got a new fire door, I think, um, which goes into the fire escape itself. Now, as you can see, it's a slight windy day because this demonstrates it, but that doesn't really make any difference to the principle. These fire doors are not working. Um, they're blowing open in the wind. The reason for that is there is a through draft coming through the building. If you follow me down here, you'll be able to see why there is this enormous breeze coming through, running through the building. So, going down the corridor, um, a few years ago, the council had <coughs> these installed. Um, these are new files. Um, and the idea was to further compartmentalise the corridor into two sections. Compartmentalisation, as you can probably know, means that if a fire breaks out in the flat there, it will be contained by the compartmentalisation in the flat. But if it breaks out of here, this area itself will be compartmentalised. Again, that allows people in that part of the block to, to escape, and people in this part of the corridor to go upstairs and escape a different way. Um, as leaseholders, we're leaseholders, and we try to be leaseholder on the estate to charge, I think, £3,600 to have these doors for the table. As you can see, it's got this tumescent uh, strip that's meant to expand the really. They're not working. They are in breach of um, the fire safety uh, compartmentalisation of, of this building. Now, the reason for that is not because the doors are wrong, it's because of all changes to the corridor. So, the policy through here, and you can see what those changes are. So we're going down to the other end of the corridor, where it's split, so you've got two flats uh, facing on the end. Now, if you point around here on the left, originally, <coughs> this part of the corridor had a, I think, a laundry room for drying clothes. So people in the block, back in the 60s or 70s, when they still did this, who were coming here. And as you can see, there's the same size and type of, uh, uh, what do you call it, of air coming through, what do you call this? Beds. Beds, yeah, beds coming through. Um, obviously, this is to, if, you, if someone comes in and hangs their clothes up, this is going to air it nicely. Uh, so it makes a very good room. However, some time ago, I'm not quite sure when, you can see here they removed this uh, this drying room, this laundry drying room. You can see it on the wall, you can see it going down here. That this has happened on every floor, in every all three blocks in the estate. On the other side, you see you've got much smaller beds. Now, this hasn't changed, and presumably this was because they didn't want the designers to have too strong a draft going through from here to the end of the corridor. However, now opening, having opened up the laundry room, you've got this immense draft coming from both sides and whooshing out of here. Um, and what that means is the final not working. Now, today is a kind of windy day because we wanted to demonstrate how, how uh, extensive it is. It actually happens all the time. And of course, in a fire, you've got enormous changes in air pressure, which suck air through at great speed. Um, that's one of the great causes of the fire. One of the reasons there are central fire alarms uh, in buildings is if you have a central fire alarm, say someone would be the person in that flat there, their fire goes, and a central fire alarm, a fire alarm rings, everyone opens their door at the same time, and you get this huge rush of air, which is a fire, if it was the air, within the fire in the corridor. We've managed to almost exactly replicate that effect. We've created precisely the same chimney effect, a through draft, which was the cause of the immensely quick flow of uh, spread of the fire in the Grenfell Tower fire uh, disaster in the at least 72 people. So the doors are okay, but what we need to do is we need to change this situation here. Either the slats need to make, be made as narrow as they are on this side, or they need to be closed off altogether. Um, a, the fire safety system of a building isn't its individual parts, it's whether the doors fit in terms of materials or structure. Um, what fire regulations say is how they work in the fire system of the entire building. At the moment, these are all but useless as fire safety tools. 
and removing that has compromised the fire safety of the building. This is in breach of fire safety regulations. We've pointed this out to Labour Council on many occasions, and as far as we know, no fire safety assessment has been done by the Council or any sort of specialists at all. So we'd like them to come in and do this. After the Grenfell Tower fire, we held a meeting on this day because so many uh, residents have been contacting the CRA and, uh, and were worried about the fire safety of the building. And we assured them that the conditions that led to the Grenfell Tower fire, the cladding on it, were not in place here, and therefore this place, uh, this building was, was, was safe. Uh, however, during the meeting, uh, someone pointed out precisely this, that these doors were blowing open like this. And at the meeting, we had uh, a very eminent architect, Kate McIntosh, whose husband, George Finch, designed this building. So she knows it as well as anyone, uh, anyone living. Uh, and she said, if these doors are blowing like this, if the instrument and sewers work and so on, um, these, this is in breach of fire safety. I think if someone who knows the building as well as this and knows fire safety, safety regulations, someone who designs um, council housing blocks <coughs> says this, this is definitely in breach. So we'd like the council to, first of all, get a fire safety officer in here to confirm this analysis, and second of all, to do something about it.